Good evening, Marketplace Monday. Good evening. Good evening. Wow, that was good. You guys are learning. Outstanding. Uh, welcome, Facebook Live contributors slash participants slash observers. Appreciate you, you logging in and taking a look at what we're going to do and listening to what God has to say tonight. You guys are in for a really exciting night tonight. Not because I'm speaking, because Jim is speaking. Woo! Again, we're getting ready to have our second of the three-part series on excellence. We're going to have some really, Jim's got, I, I know he's just got a tremendous amount of uh, good things to share. But before we do that, one announcement and a, and a quick review. But let me do the, the quick review. So I, those of you that were here last week, we all learned about the foundations of kingdom excellence, how to be excellent. When we, we got into Proverbs and understood that if you're excellent, you're going to stand before kings. If you're not excellent, well, we don't know where you're going to be standing, but probably not before a king. And if you are standing before a king, it's probably not something good. Been there, done that. But we want to be standing before kings for because of our excellence. We want to be Daniels. We want to be Nehemiahs. We want to be those people. And one of the things that Jim talked, a few things, talked about being very good, excelling, being quick, skillful, diligent, and ready. And then he asked us to evaluate ourselves on where we were on those four, those four skill sets. Are we quick? Are we skillful? Are we diligent? Are we ready? Where are we on that scale? So hopefully over the week you've spent some time thinking about that in, in ways that you can improve. What we're going to do this week is step in further and give you some skills in order to be able to move into excellence. But one of the things that we want to do at Marketplace Monday to be a little bit more excellent in what we do and to give people more time because time is valuable. We want to make sure that we value people's time. So we're going to be moving our start time for Marketplace Monday from 7 o'clock show time to, z to 6.30. I almost said 0, 6.30. That would be a little early. To 6.30 show time. And we will start the Marketplace Monday message at 7 o'clock instead of 7.30. So you on Facebook Live, and, and we'll put out a message uh, over the next couple days that we will be starting at 7 o'clock. So... You come in at 6.30, and we'll have our fellowship time together, and then prayer time, and then we'll have the message at 7. Part of that is because we want to give people back some time, because time is valuable. So we we end up praying for quite some time, some nights. I, I, we'll, probably, <laughs> we'll probably still be praying for quite some time. So uh, just remember with that. For those on Facebook Live... If you go and look for the, there is another document posted, the PDF, that will give you the outline of what we're going to be talking about tonight, just like it was last week. If you have not had a chance to, to look at what Jim taught last week, I would encourage you to go back and take a look at it, because what we're going to do is build on that. And then those of you that are here, don't forget to have your prayer card, your prayer request, and we will be praying for you over the week. With that, I'd like to ask my friend, partner in ministry, and mentor to come up and join me. Let me pray for him. Mentor. You are a mentor. I'm not that much older than you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Don't get personal. Uh, oh, I love you, brother. Uh, Lord, we just come before you with, with thankful hearts. Lord, you, you're awesome. You have taught us to do all things well, like your son, who went before us and did all things well. Lord, we just praise you and thank you for that. Lord, I ask that you just pour out your anointing spirit on Jim as he speaks, as he speaks your word in the heart. Lord, just prepare the way, prepare the hearts, prepare the ears and the mind. Lord, help this to transform those people that need to be transformed in the marketplace to do and understand what excellence really is and how to walk that out. Lord, just pour up your spirit on Jim. 
Jesus' name. Amen. You can give it up for Dan if you want to. You don't have to be quiet. You know, this is a, the house of the Lord's filled with joy. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. That makes noise sometimes. Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Who let the dogs out? Oh. Okay, we won't go there. We won't go there. I don't think that's in hymnal number 136 or anything. Okay. We are in the middle of a three-part series, and we're launching the second year. You! Second year of Marketplace Mondays. We finally figured out what we're supposed to be doing. It took a year. That's not too bad. And now we're getting into it. Last year was a foundation. And now we're getting into really more depth of a specific how-to, tactical, we're going to make you better. As long as you listen and do it, you're going to improve. So we're going to help build up those skills. And we want to launch this year with a lesson called Anointed to Excel. Last week, as Dan mentioned, we looked at what anointment was and what Excel means. When you look at Proverbs 22, 29, you have it on your handout. That's our theme verse for this series, Proverbs 22, 29. Do you see a man or woman who excels in his work? And we broke down excels. He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. And like Dan mentioned, we looked at Excel last week, what this word means, and there were four key elements. Quick, skillful, diligent, and ready. That was, that's the combination of what, biblically, on this verse, the word Excel, Mahir, M-A-H-I-R, means. Quick, skillful, diligent, ready. I hope you did ask yourself, where are you in terms of where you are in your marketplace right now in those four? And if you're progressing, if not, tonight we're going to help you just a little bit more. All right? As you see, the title that we have for tonight's lesson is The Path to Kingdom Excellence. I've changed the title. One of the things I've learned as a writer, writers don't write, they rewrite. So I want you to scratch out The Path to Kingdom Excellence. The real title of this lesson should be The Path to Marketplace Transformation. Now that has a little bit better ring to it, doesn't it? Yeah, man, man. Ooh. The Path to Marketplace Transformation. And why do I say that should be the title of this lesson? It only came to me this morning. This is what we should title it, so forgive me for the late notice. Okay, Christian, forgive me. Thank you. Look at what we have there at the top of the handout. Mentioned excellence. It begins with excellence. Those who excel will stand before kings. But that's just the first step we suggest in this path to marketplace transformation. Now I want to, we'll go in and fill in the other three because you can see on the handout, I mean, it's give it away. But I'd like for you to write it down. You're looking, you're thinking, you're seeing, and so let's walk, just fill in the blanks. Excellence will lead you to access. Access will lead you to potential influence. It's not automatic. And then influence is where you will then have the potential to transform. That is the path. That is the path that we are going to keep pursuing at Marketplace Mondays and beyond. Excellence leads to access. When you're really good at what you do, people take notice. When people take notice, that gives you a chance to influence for the kingdom. And when you influence for the kingdom, that's where you launch transformation. This is the Kingdom Institute model. And Marketplace Mondays is the first of what will be 100 hubs of influence. Amen? Amen. Quickly, access. We'll come back to this later, but I just want to give you an overview of this, and we're going to go deep in one particular thing, not even on the handout. Access is defined as permission or ability to enter, to approach, communicate to a person or a thing. You have access to this building only because some of us have a code to get in. If you didn't have the code to get in, would you have access? Okay. So, but you were given access to this building. When you work in, with, with excellence, when you perform your job, wherever you are in the marketplace, maybe travel, wherever you might be, when you work with excellence, 
that gives you access not only to your boss, but other people around you and the boss's boss. When the boss's boss takes notice of how well you're doing, that's access. It doesn't have to be you stand before Donald Trump today. One day you might. But the kings in your marketplace and your territory might be your boss's boss or your boss's boss's boss. Those are the kings that you'll stand before. But only if you're excellent. Like Dan said, if you're not working real well, if you're not doing everything you're supposed to do, you may stand before them. <laughs> be more judgment than an influence. The devil hates spirit-led marketplace warriors with access to his leaders. Think about that. The last thing the enemy wants is for you to have access to his leaders. Come on. When we walk out here in the marketplace, the 98% of us will make a living out there in the marketplace, whether it's in education or government or wherever it might be. Who controls that economy? Who runs that economy on earth? We're walking in the enemy territory every time we go to work. Yeah. Have you ever thought about it that way? Yes. If not, begin because that's the battle. That's the earthly battle that we face. Now, we're going to take back some territory. If you hang with us long enough, we're going to take back some territory for the kingdom. That's what this is all about. But he doesn't like it, and he's going to try to block your access. But think about the Josephs and the Moses and the Esthers and the Nehemiahs and the Daniels. They were so excellent, even in pagan societies, even in societies that they were slaves, they were so excellent, they got access. Good role models for us. You think it's tough where you work today? <laughs> Being a dungeon like Joseph, plus. We'll come back and talk about him later, all right? Here's a kingdom action to take. We, we could spend a week or two or three just on access, but I just want to plant the seed. When you're excellent, it gives you access. Here's a question you can ask about your access. Ask Holy Spirit to reveal to you ways the devil attempts to limit your access and then what Holy Spirit wants you to do about it. Ah, oh, okay, that's what he's trying to do. Thank you. What do you want to do about it? Got it. Here I go. Because he that lives within you, huh? Holy Spirit knows everything about everything. Past, present, and future. He knows all the answers. The devil is really very predictable. Don't honor him. Blow him out of the water. She may ask us, okay, how's the devil trying to stop me? Man, I just can't seem to get through this hurdle. I can't get access to that. Hmm, I wonder who's trying to stop that. You kingdom warrior. Ever thought about that? Because we don't battle flesh and blood even in the marketplace. Well, I could preach on that for us and not even know we got way too much more to do. Excellence leads to access. Once you get that access, now you have a chance to influence on the path. We're going to go deep into influence because this is your opportunity to influence toward transformation. Either to make your situation better, to plant seeds for the kingdom, whatever it might be. A lot of things you might want to influence. When you look at influence, here's the definition of influence. The act or power of producing an effect without apparent, look at this, exertion. When you're influencing, it's just natural. Or may I say for us, as we're pressing in, it's supernatural. Because who's working through us? Holy Spirit is just telling us how the enemy is trying to stop us, and guess who's working in us? So it's, and this is the dictionary definition, but they don't realize how anointed that definition is. And then the second definition is to add, everybody say value. Yeah. Value. Have you ever been in business long enough to where people are saying, what's your added value? How are you going to add value? What, what do you bring that's value? What's value added? Yes, 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 yes. yes well, we're going to, I'm going to add some value to you tonight. You see what's on the handout, right? And we're going to get down to those four value-added questions that a lot of companies have paid me a lot of money to share with them and coach them up and teach them through. 
sales forces and executive teams and management teams and associations. I've written a lot of articles on those four questions. And you get it tonight for how much? How much you get? How much you pay for this tonight? You have no idea what you have to pay for this tonight. You just got any idea. No, it's complimentary tonight, all right? But I just want you to know when we get to those questions, it's going to take a few minutes because I'm going to give you, as you if you watch on the Facebook Live post I put earlier today, just talking about tonight's session, I said, don't be surprised. You're going to come away a little bit extra. I'm going to give you a live case study on adding value. Well, you're going to get a taste of that right now. You walked in in the last few weeks, we started giving you handouts. Is that adding value? Yes. What? Is that adding value? Prayer cards sitting out. Is that adding value? It doesn't take a lot, but that's adding just a little piece of value. If that's not adding value, we'll get rid of it. Be glad to get rid of it. All right? Save me some time and printing. All right? Oh, by the way, you know, these handouts are on the Marketplace Mondays. You can download the handouts from there, from anywhere around the world. You think that's adding value? Oh, we post these videos after we get through recording it. You think that's adding value? I had two people ask me today, will you post it? Yeah, I can't watch it live. I said, yeah, absolutely. Anytime you want to. See, we're all about, see, that's value. That's value. But I want you to turn your handout over because I'm going to add some more value. I'm going to teach you a little bit more than even on the handout tonight. Anybody interested? Yeah. Seriously, I'm serious. Yeah. Okay. Value is defined as three things. You write down as you wish. This is just value added for you. I want you to really think about value. Value definition. The monetary worth of something. Or, you know, the market value. It's the monetary worth. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, companies work for their market value. What's the market value of your company now? Stock price and all that. Huh? But also it can be defined as the relative worth. I'm not talking about your aunts and uncles. Relative <laughs> work. The utility, the importance of what you're doing. It also can be defined as, get this, something in, I am, intrinsically desirable. Oh, when you think about value, it's intrinsic, not extrinsically, intrinsically. Something inside you that you say, oh, that, that has value to I value that. It's intrinsic. Those are the definitions. The monetary, the intrinsic, the relative worth, the relative worth. Hold that. We're going to come back and I'll give you some examples of that. I want to share with you three value truths. When I coach this, when I teach this, be it sales teams or executive teams, when I help them get their thinking straight, on what they might have as value or could have as value. Here's a couple of things I'd like to share with them. Not everything, don't have time tonight. Number one, I want to share with you three value truths. You've got to understand this. Whether you're in ministry, whether you're in private business, it doesn't matter. Three value truths. Number one, only customers define value. Period. Exclamation point. Put it in caps. You do not define value, Steve. For your services. You may think what you, do, what you do is valuable, but only one person determines value, and that's your customer. Okay? Number two. Value follows fee. Not the other way around. Let me coach you up on this. Value follows fee. F-E-E. -E. How much it costs. FEE. -E. Value follows fee. Why would, why would some of us pay $60,000 for a very safe leather wrapped Lexus when you can buy a Kia that did exactly the same thing for $30,000? Why would we buy a Lexus? Safer, smoother ride. No, they're safe, they're smooth. Would that customer say, hmm, that's a better value? But it costs twice as much. How could that be? Value follows fee. Have you ever heard the expression, well, you get what you pay for? When you're the low-ball provider, 
When you go out and buy something cheap and you have to buy it again and again or replace it or fix it, is that value? No. Is cheap value? No. Do people really want the cheapest? No. They don't. If they want the cheapest, then they don't want it your service. Because then there's somebody that can always undersell it. Always. Always. I'm going to take a couple of minutes because this is a great case study. Um, I'll get back to this, but I want to give you a living example of this. Uh, Midway Services in Clearwater, Florida. They just recently sold. It's a plumbing business. Plumbing supply. Or not plumbing supply, but actually plumbing business. They've been around for about 30 years. I wrote them in my book. They were my customer service case study for a book I wrote called Finding and Keeping Great Employees, where we talked about four different types of core cultures in America and what it takes. And there's typically one of these four cores operating in your culture to make you successful. It's either service culture, innovation culture, quality culture, or a spirit-driven culture. And my case study for the service culture, this was the Fortune Magazine Best Business Book. I'm not, I'm not bragging. I'm, gonna, I'm telling you that for a reason. Hold on. Midway Services. This is how Midway Services would make a house call in Clearwater, Florida at the time when you had a water heater issue. All right? Here's what they would do. They would pull up in front of the house in Clearwater, St. Pete, wherever, Tampa, Florida, and they would make sure they parked their freshly washed van that morning. That morning. That morning. Freshly washed van that morning in clear eyesight of whoever comes to the front door so they know who's ringing the doorbell. They'd ring the doorbell. They would stand back from the doorbell. That's what they rang most of the people that answered the doors at that time in Clearwater, Florida, were ladies. Many of them home by themselves. The Midway Services plumber, plumber, had on his fresh press that morning, collared, button-down, short sleeve shirt, slacks, dress shoes, and under his arm, a rolled up red carpet. Ma'am, I'm with Midway Services. May I enter your home? Why, oh, yes. Before they entered the home, I'm not making this up, before the plumber entered your home, they put down the rug and they put on white surgical booties that you put in surgery centers before you go into surgery. So they don't Take a bunch of the gunk on your sideway and trace it through your house. They then would take the red carpet, literally, and go to your water heater, pull it down there so anything that comes out of your water heater hits the red carpet and not your flooring. Very often, Bubba's Plumbing Company would follow Midway services around. And they literally, this is truth, Bubba would come up to the door a couple minutes after the Midway guy got there and say, I can do whatever they can do for 30% less. Who do you think the lady led in his house? Anybody want to guess? One of the most successful plumbing companies in the country. Would you consider that value-added service? Yeah. Everything they did was value in the eyes of the customer, and they had a 30 to 40 percent higher margin. Was that story worth hearing? Yes. Yeah. Don't ever tell me cheap sales. Don't ever tell me cheap sales. I can give you all kinds of other stories, but that was one. Value follows speed. You think that lady said, man, that's a good value. Mm -hmm. I can trust them. They'll take, they care about my house. Oh, and by the way, they would upsell you then an entire home insurance stuff. I mean, they, they were good. <laughs> three value truths. First one, only customers would find value. Number two, value follows speed. Number three, 
few words, but this is a very important thought for you, whether you're launching a business or already in the business. Value often leads the customer where they need to go and they don't even know it yet. Your value often leads a customer where they want to go and they don't even know it yet. When iPad came out, who needed who needed an iPad? Who was asking Apple for an iPad? Nobody. Do you think they were leading their customers where they needed to go and they did not even know it yet? Your customers only know what your customers know. One of the ways to add value is to help. And I'm going to give you five different levels of value-added service snacks, five different levels, is to lead them to places they don't even know they need to go. How do you do that? Well, there's five levels. Keep, this is the last extra value-added piece of information I want to share with you tonight, all right? There are five levels of value in business. Now, we've talked about what value is, some value truths, and now there's five levels of value. We're going to end up with the four questions. We're getting there, all right? We're getting there. But this is stuff, if you grab onto this, You'll never, ever think about being the low-cost provider again because I don't need those purpose. That's right. I don't need them. They are. Now, five levels of value. I could, I could really start preaching. I'm on stage now. Five levels of value in business. I'm going from low to high. I don't want you to ask yourself, where do you see yourself in your business, in your ministry? What level are you? Lowest level, what is called level one right now, is a service provider. I provide a service. You know, I'm a plumber. You know, I wax cars. You know, I, you know do mortgage loans. I, I provide a service. Now I cut hair. Second, problem solve. Hmm, that's a little bit higher than just providing a service. It's not the same, but a little bit higher. Do you see yourselves more as a service provider or a problem solver for your customers, whoever that might be? A little bit higher level is strategic thinker. Oh, let me help you get your thinking straight on this. Let me, let me show you a couple things you may not know about this. Nordstrom's is brilliant at this. Anybody ever shopped at a Nordstrom's department store? You know what Nordstrom's is? I mean, it is like the high end, it is like the Ritz Carlton of department stores. Nordstrom's is amazing. When you walk up, and this happened to me in Portland. I was speaking a few years ago in Portland, and I just happened to be next door to a, to a Nordstrom's, and I was just walking through. I had some time. And I went and I was looking at a sweater. Of course, the sweater was $170. Fire. I didn't buy it. Yeah. It was a lot of value, though, but I just chose not to buy it. <laughs> you know, uh, without checking with Brenda first. Or with, and, um, I, and I was looking at it. Now, what do typically most retail clerks ask you when, you when you look at something? Do you need any help? Do you have any questions? Do you know what Nordstrom's teaches their people to do? Uh, sir, that happens to be a very special blend. Nordstrom's the only blend of wool. In fact, the sheep on that wool, they're actually raised in southern India. And we, um, we this, is only, um, this is the only type of sweater that, <laughs> let me tell you what to do with that sweater. I still didn't buy it, but you get the point. <laughs> they were showing the value. You, don't, you have no idea what goes into the sweater. Let me explain it to you, you southern boy. <laughs> Service provider, level one. Problem solver, two. Strategic thinker, number four. The fourth level, partner. Partner. Do your customers see you as a partner? Partner? Yeah. That you're partnering with them in business, that you absolutely have their best interest in mind. Beyond just a strategic thing, giving them creative ways and telling them about, you know, the quality of a sweater, do they see you as a partner? That you're working alongside them and walking with them, not in a legal partnership, but in a relational partnership. Do they see you as a partner? Hmm. 
and the highest for what we're going to chat about tonight, the level five that I want you to chew on, is trusted advisor. Trusted advisor. What does a trusted advisor in terms of value add in a service business or anywhere else? In a ministry? A trusted advisor, the customer will look at you and say, whatever you say, we're going to do it. I don't care what the cost is. Years ago, that's where I wanted to become in business. In fact, on my business card still to this day is advisor to leaders. Why? Because that's the highest level of service. One of my, um, I was a speaking years ago um, on, I think, employee retention. I believe it was and culture, maybe it was culture. At the annual meeting of the building industry's independent dealers, not the Lowe's and the Home Depot's, but the independent guys and guy that's all over the country. And I was speaking of their annual meeting. I've been in home buildings. I have a little bit of taste of what, you know, lumber yards are all about, you know. I've got a little bit of sawdust in my, in my blood. And I was speaking, and then a guy, about six, seven hundred people. And at the end of the little 45 minutes, 50 minutes, whatever it was, a man comes running, literally comes trotting down the aisle. He's a tall guy, comes trotting down the aisle. I thought he was mad at me. I thought I was maybe at some. But he looked at me and said, I need you in my life. <laughs> Dude, I love hearing that from, from an audience. I've never heard that before. The man's name was Charlie Bad. Charlie, I didn't know this. He was president of what down in Fort Myers was for that industry, the company of the year. Dude. Let's talk. Yes, sir. You got that right, Jackson. We talked. We uh, came up with a retainer agreement on some strategic planning and some leadership development and all kinds of stuff. Um, two months after we began, let me tell you what it means to be a trusted advisor, okay? How you get to a trusted advisor. Two weeks after this one year retainer began, and what a retainer relationship is simply this. For a chunk of money, they have access to me just about any time they want. You know, we'll, we'll negotiate, you know, anything that's in my portfolio is a possibility. We'll just decide what needs to be done whenever it needs to be done. You know, executives understand that. So we have a retainer. Two months into the retainer, trusted advisor. Two months into the retainer, Charlie writes a letter to the association. Of course, you know, he's a big deal. He's company of the year, man. One of the biggest in the industry. You know, dollar-wise and footprint-wise. One of the best run. Two months into it, he sends a letter to the president of the association and says, I forget the guy's name. Long letter. He says, man, when you brought Jim in, man, that was so, thank you, thank you. We just signed a retainer with him, my first-year retainer. Trusted advisor. And in two months, he's more, more than fill the full year retainer already. We're already talking about a second year. Now, I'm not doing one of these. Please don't, understand. Please don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not doing one of these. I'm doing, hmm, has anything like that ever happened to you? when you move toward a trusted advisor, look what happens. Now, Brenda knew that she was going to have so much money every month for a couple of years coming in, and she was very happy. <laughs> amen. 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 You guys that aren't married, you will soon learn what that's all about. Amen. <laughs> Are you moving toward that level of being a trusted advisor, regardless of what you say, we're going to do it because... See, that is adding value, is it not? Yes. Are you already thinking differently about value than you ever had before? May I just ask you bluntly? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, now let's go to the four questions that will get you started. These are the same, turn the page over now. These are the same four questions I've used for years and years. These are not woo, questions. But the more you dig into them, the more you're going to say, now I'm starting to see value and delivery. This is actually what you do. Think about what you do. Put in the staff position, put in the ministry. Number one, four value-added questions. How does this person or group define value? Remember we said earlier, only customers define value. 
Number one, how does this person, just fill in the blank, define value? Now, if we were in a formal coaching or advising capacity, we were in a workshop, which we may want to do one of these days. These are the kinds of ways, I mean, there's, it's an endless amount of ways you can define value. You can define value as usability, functionality, scalability, importance, convenience, stability, insight, re re replicability, customizability, measurability, relevance, on and on and on. There's any number of ways you can measure value, all right? But here's the question. Christy, you are an absolute expert. You make my wife look gorgeous in your salon. But do you really know how my wife defines value? What would be value added to a friend? What would be value added to all the departments? you have contact with What would be value? You know, how would they define value for you and me? What is their, in their mind, is value? How can you get access through your, through your, through your excellence through the value you're adding? How can I get access so the next time you have a, the promotion comes up, they don't even think about anybody else. It's automatically. Anita, Anita, come on. New desk, new row. Here's $20,000. Come on. Get to work. Right? You can say hallelujah, that would be good. <laughs> How do they define value? Number two. Okay? If now you get the piece maybe, and if you don't know, ask. Number two. What do I currently, fill in the blank, what do I currently do or offer that's already perceived or could be perceived as value added? Maybe there's something you're currently doing that they don't even know. That's part of their definition of value. Whose fault is that? Let me say that again. Maybe you're already doing something that they see as valuable, but they don't even know you do it. Whose fault is that? Let me tell you one of the most... How can I phrase this? One of the most dramatic and heart-wrenching truths that I've ever learned in my 25 plus years of having business on my own, service provider. I'm a sales guy, man. I, I gotta sell, you know, if I'm gonna get a speaking gig or a consulting gig, you know, I gotta add some value, right? So I've lived this for 25 plus years and in other businesses too. It's when my mentor, Nito Cabane, if you don't have a mentor, well, he was a coach. Yeah, I won't go there. Um, I have an opportunity with several other professional speakers to have access to who's considered the very best, still is professional speaker in the industry, Anito Cabane. He had an academy, and he has said, I'm gonna open it up to a few folks that are hungry. So I had access. For one year, I'd see, I had to pay for the airfare for a three-day, three-night trip, High Point, North Carolina, is where he lived. And we just, you know, he had 12 or 15 of us there. Um, and so I had to pay for that, pay for the hotels, everything coming out of my pocket, plus it was $12,000. Wow. I jumped at it. If you had a chance, if you were in real estate development in big cities, and you could learn from Donald Trump for a year, how much would that be worth to you? Okay. How much are you willing to invest to get better? Okay, now I'm getting in your face. But I'm too cheap, I can't afford it. You can't afford not to. Okay, okay, I'm off, I'm off that. Now, here's what Nito taught us. And he taught us one of the most important things. I really want you to take this to heart. You do your customers, Bobby, I hope you're listening to this, brother. You do your customers a disservice by not telling them what you can do for them. That's bragging. No. Have you noticed today more than any other time you've ever heard me speak? I've given examples of some of the stuff I've done for the companies. Have you heard? Did you hear that? Was it bragging? Was it stories? 
getting inside great companies like Midway Services and Nordstrom's and all. No, it wasn't bragging, it's fact. If, you, if your customers really don't know what you can do for them, you're doing them a disservice. It's up to you. Who's going to tell them unless it's you? Who's going to tell them unless it's you? It ain't bragging like Muhammad Ali said. If you can back it up, it ain't bragging, it's fact. I had a hard, I had a trouble, trouble doing it as a Christian, as a believer, because you have to be humble. Let other people talk you up. If I'm on stage in front of 800 people and they've never heard or seen my name before, who's going to tell them what I can do for them? Without being salesy. Without being salesy. Tonight you've already learned some of the things that I've done in my business. Now you have a much clearer picture, and here's something that I really have not done, done well for you guys. It's not about me, but I've not really let you know specifically the wealth of experiences that I've had. It's not that I've known everything, but I've been around a few blocks. I've been around a few blocks. You know anybody else around here that's been to the IBM Executives Palisade Center in New York and, and spoken to executives before? Anybody been to the headquarters of Best Buy? Worked with the headquarters of Best Buy? Anybody, anybody done that? No? Okay, fine. You're looking at somebody. Is that bragging? Well, maybe that was a little bit. But I'm trying to make a point. I'm trying to make a point. And I will be very blunt with you guys. Hey, guy, that can't be, you know, got to be careful these days. Do that, do that. Typically, you younger guys, you got access to guys like Dan and me and others. But know a few things. Are you leveraging it? Say well. What do I currently offer or do that would be perceived as value added? Number three, what could I do? Oh, now we're getting, oh, let's get creative. Maybe I'm not doing it, but what could I offer that could be perceived as value added? I promise you, a lot of the stuff that I've created in my consulting, advising, it wasn't because I already had it. It was, okay, wait now. They've got a gap. If you're in the services business, how many of you are in the services business? Steve, you're in the services business. How many in the service, what you say, services business? Your business, your business is filling gaps. What are other people not doing? Where are the gaps? Because you find the gaps, you fill the gaps, you're adding value to people that nobody else is. Because there's a gap. We're in the gaps business. What could I offer? And then finally, number four, it all boils down to this, is my company, is me, is, if it's me, is my time worth the additional effort and expense? You come up with all kinds of stuff. But is it really going to have an ROI? What does ROI mean? Return on investment. What is going to be? Well, I could just go on and on. I've got so much more I can share. We'll just leave it at that for tonight, okay? We'll come back. These are the four value-added questions. I challenge each and every one of you to do this. In fact, Facebook, those of you who are listening on Facebook, I'm going to do this. Those of you who are still with me, and I know some of you are because many of you reached out to me today. Will this be on you? How can I? Yeah, yeah, I'm asking you to ask questions too. Here's what I'm going to talk about value-add. Here's what I'm going to do for everybody on Facebook and for all of you. I will, I will offer you some free strategic advising. Anybody interested? Yes. All I'm going to ask you to do is answer these four questions as best you can and email it to me. Is that easy enough? Tell me a little bit about your business, what, what your goal is, what you're trying to do, and then answer these four questions as best you can. What do you see your customers as defining value? What, what are you currently doing? What could you do? Is your time worth it? I will email you back. I will email you back after I look at it. And I may come back with questions. I may come back with comments. I may come back with suggestions, maybe books. I don't know what it might be. But I will feed you what, whatever I might have, whatever it might be, on these questions to help get you going. My email address is Jim. And I want you to use the Kingdom Institute email. All right. Jim at the Kingdom Institute, the Kingdom Institute.org. 
Jim at the Kingdom Institute dot org. Once again, Facebook friends, Jim at the Kingdom Institute dot org. If you answer those four value questions, I will give you some complimentary value added strategic response. Anybody interested? Okay, we'll see. We'll see how many of you follow through. All right. Here's my guarantee. You get to me by this Thursday, you'll have an answer by Friday. You get to me by this Thursday, I'll, I, I'll do my best to even get to you before that. I'll give it to you by Friday. Next week, I'm, I'm, out, of, I'm out, of, out of it. I won't be able to answer anybody next week. But this week, I'll get back to you. That's my value-added promise. All right? So ask Holy Spirit to reveal to you how best to add value to your influence groups. I told you we're going to go deep on that tonight. I know we've gone a little bit longer on that, but let me tell you, this is so important. If you get this right, and I know, Dave, what you're thinking about, I know what you're thinking about in your expansion. You know, looking to expand. What is it? that? What, where are those pockets of value that we haven't tapped into yet? That people don't care about the cause. If my back is killing me from an accident, do you really think I'm really concerned about how much you're going to charge me to take away the pain. Just had that conversation today. Just had that conversation today. Colin, if you had a tooth that was absolutely killing you, are you going to negotiate with a dentist his fee? See what I'm getting at? Okay. I hope some of you are a little bit excited about some of this. Huh? Now, all of this is heading toward transformation. We're going to wrap it up in about three minutes. It won't take long at all. Okay? All about transformation. Remember, excellence leads to access. This is our model. Access leads to influence. And now that you have a chance to influence, and that could be all the value added and beyond, now you have a chance to really transform not only your marketplace, but also transform for the kingdom. That's ultimately what we're about. But why not transform your marketplace right now? Transformation is to change the outward form or inner nature. Now, according to Ed Silvaso, I mentioned him last week. I'll give his book one more plug. Ed Silvaso's book, Anointed for Business, one of the top ten in what we're doing. If you want to read a great book, Ed Silvaso's Anointed for Business. This comes out of Ed's book. Now, I've written blogs very popular blogs. Uh, in fact, someone mentioned to me today, thank you for reminding me of this. There's four levels of Christians in business, according to Ed. You can write this down. There's four levels of Christians in business. Survive. You just want to hold your ground with dignity in an undignified place. Okay, I'm just going to survive. I believe I'm going to heaven, but man, I'm just holding on until the rapture. Okay? <laughs> A second level is to apply biblical principles. You want to be a good testimony, you know, keep a positive outlook. You apply biblical principles. With all due respect to many, many great Christian business organizations I've worked with, I've spoken with, I have great, I'm speaking with, in fact, I'm speaking with the vice president of marketing of one of these tomorrow, um, an international um, business ministry. Um, we, we got a telephone call on some stuff we're working on together. They apply biblical principles, but many of them, unlike us, they really don't embrace the concept of the power of Holy Spirit. And that's not, that's not a, I'm not, I'm not being critical, that's just where they are. And here's what I like to remind you. Satan can apply biblical principles. And he does. When Jethro, the first management consultant recorded in the Bible, went to Moses. Jethro was a management consultant. I like him. He was a strategic advisor. He saw Moses sitting on and answering all these questions all day long. Everybody brought Moses all those problems. All of them, all of them, all of them, all of them. And Jethro said, boy, what you doing ain't good. And he taught Moses how to delegate. Delegation was the first consulting lesson in the Bible. Besides... God delegating, taking care of the garden to Adam, right? Satan can apply delegation principles. And they work because of biblical principles, but there's no heavenly power behind it. Level three 
is to activate the fullness and power of the Holy Spirit, according to Ed. Now you're starting to activate heaven's power. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Kingdom has power in it. Jesus walked in power. So can we, because we have Jesus right in him. And finally, according to Ed, and he does this, he is a marketplace transformer. Transform the marketplace. That's the highest level of Christian in business. Those of us that are dedicated, we want to do more than just have a profit, want to you know, have a good reputation and hang on. We want to transform where we are for the kingdom. We're going to put a stake in the ground and our territory in Morgan's Landing, in Northwest Florida, this, we're taking back this territory for the kingdom. And we get another person in Santa Rosa doing the same thing. County. And get somebody in Mobile doing the same thing. Guess what we've got? We've got a region now to where we're making a stand in, in mortgage lending for the kingdom. And when we raise up kings like you and queens in your territory, and we do this around the globe, guess what we've got? Pop, 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 pop. We got heaven's popcorn in power. And we're taking back territory. We're taking back territory a little bit at a time for the kingdom. Because we're not about earthly rewards. I hope we're about heavenly rewards. This is the title stuff we're doing, folks. You're going to stand before God. What did you do with one again? Jesus is sitting next to the Father. God said, Son, come over and sit until I make your enemies your footstool. You go back to read Joshua. That's where that came from. Well, Joshua had his foot on the necks of his enemies. God, what do we do? Cut off their necks. Okay. Who's supposed to make the enemies Jesus' footstool until he returns? Now, who do you think there's right now? We're the ones that are supposed to take back the marketplace. Amen. Jesus got the keys to the kingdom. And before he went to heaven, he said, I'm giving them to you, disciples. Now it's your turn. Let's transform the world. That's why we're about transforming the marketplace. We are all about transforming the globe through the marketplace. Because that's where everybody lives anyway. Not inside a church. So, ask the Holy Spirit to equip you to be a marketplace transformer. I know there was a lot tonight, and forgive me for going a little bit longer than normal, but I hope it was worth it for you. Mm -hmm. I hope you've got some new things to think about, whether you're working in a large company, whether you're a standalone solo entrepreneur like me, Christian, whether you're a small business, large business, thinking about the ministry, going global on a ministry, whatever it might be, there's something here for each of you. I pray. So, Father, I pray that tonight, that this message on the path to marketplace transformation of how to move from excellence to access to influence to transformation not only resonated, but also stirred up in these saints a passion to focus on, at least tonight our focus has been on value, of defining it, refining it, clarifying it and then adding value because when we add value we are then working in excellence and people will take notice. When we have more value for what we do in our efforts than all of our competitors everybody notices. So Father I pray a spirit of just anointment for this message, an anointment for these men and women as they pursue adding and creating value that has kingdom eternal rewards in Jesus name. Amen. Remember, remember email me if you want some free strategic advice. All right? Email me, all right? Before you cut that off, Bobby, let me just if you don't know what you just got was was thousands of dollars worth of advice and coaching and advising. Thousands of dollars worth of what he provides to significant leaders in, in businesses. So I, I hope those of you here and those of you on Facebook really appreciate what you just got for free as well as him saying, 
he will give you some strategic advice. Mm -hmm. So significant value tonight from Jim. So let's give it up for Jim. All right, and we will sign off Facebook Live. You guys have a good evening, and we'll see you same bet. Actually, no, a different bet time. That's right. Same bad channel. Next week, 7 o'clock is when we'll start the Facebook Live. Y'all take care.